Good day everyone. By the way, I am Jean E. Palalon, taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English. For today's video, we will have a video lesson of Module 1, Quarter 2 of which we will tackle about primary and secondary sources. But before we proceed to our discussion, let us have first our objectives. After completion of this module, you are expected to develop locational skills in gathering information, classify sources of information, and use locational skills to gather information from primary and secondary sources. I have here an outline for our discussion for today. First, what is a primary source? Primary sources examples, what is a secondary source? secondary sources examples and how to tell if a source is primary or secondary six primary versus secondary sources so which is better so what is a primary source primary sources are original records of the political economic artistic scientific social and intellectual thoughts and achievements of specific historical periods it is produced by the people who participated in and witness the past. Primary sources offer a variety of points of view and perspectives of events, issues, people, and places. So these records can be found anywhere in a home, a government archive, etc. So the important thing to remember is they were used or created by someone with first-hand experience of an event. So a primary source is anything that gives you direct evidence about the people, events, or phenomena that you are researching. So primary sources will usually be the main objects of your analysis. So if you are researching the past, you cannot directly access it yourself. So you need primary sources that were produced at the time by participants or witnesses, like letters, photographs, or newspapers. So if you are researching something current, your primary sources can either be qualitative or quantitative data that you collect yourself, like through interviews, surveys, experiments, or sources produced by people directly involved in the topic, like official documents or media texts. I have here examples of primary sources based on different perspectives. So first, we have history. So... We have examples like letters and diaries, photographs and video footage, official documents and records, physical objects. And for art and literature, we have novels and poems, paintings and art installations, films and performances. So for communication and social studies, we have interview transcripts, recordings of speeches, newspapers and magazines, social media posts. So, for law and politics, we have court records, legal text, government documents. And for sciences, we have empirical studies and statistical data. Now, let us move on to secondary source. So, what is a secondary source? A secondary source is anything that describes, interprets, evaluates, or analyzes information from primary sources. So, they are created after the time period being studied or by individuals who did not directly experience the events they discuss. Secondary sources build upon primary sources and offer analysis, commentary, and synthesis of the information found in primary sources. So we have here secondary sources examples. We have dictionaries, reviews, handbooks, encyclopedias, directories, books, articles, and documentaries that synthesize information on a topic, synopsis and descriptions of artistic works, encyclopedias and textbooks that summarize information and ideas, reviews and essays that evaluate or interpret something. So when you cite a secondary source, it's usually not to analyze it directly, but instead, you'll probably test its arguments against new evidence or use its ideas to help formulate your own. So let us have here primary and secondary sources examples and let us find out how these examples differ from each other. So for primary, 
we have a novel and for secondary article analyzing the novel and we have painting and then exhibition catalog explaining the painting and the letters and diaries written by a historical figure while on the other side biography of the historical figure and then primary which is essay by a philosopher and textbook summarizing the philosopher ideas then we have photographs of a historical event then documentary about the historical event and government documents about a new policy well for secondary newspaper article about the new policy and for primary we have music recordings and for secondary we have academic book about the musical style then we have results of an opinion poll then for secondary we have blog post interpreting the results of the poll and lastly the empirical study for primary source while secondary literature review that cites the studies so that's the examples how they differ both primary and secondary sources so how to tell if a source is primary or secondary so to determine if something can be used as a primary or secondary source in your research, there are some simple questions you can ask yourself. First, does this source come from someone directly involved in the events I'm studying or from another researcher? Second, am I interested in evaluating the source itself or only using it for background information? Third, does the source provide original information or does it comment upon information from other sources now let us explore more between primary or secondary sources so which is better most research uses both primary and secondary sources they complement each other to help you build a convincing argument so primary sources are more credible as evidence but secondary sources show how your work relates to existing research so what do you use primary sources for? So primary sources are the foundation of original research. They allow you to make new discoveries, provide credible evidence for your arguments, give authoritative information about your topic. So if you don't use any primary sources, your research may be considered unoriginal or unreliable. So next one, what do you use secondary sources for? So secondary sources are good for gaining a full overview of your topic and understanding how other researchers have approached it. They often synthesize a large number of primary sources that would be difficult and time-consuming to gather by yourself. So they allow you to gain background information on the topic, support or contrast your arguments with other researchers' ideas, and gather information from primary sources that you can't access directly, like private letters or physical documents located elsewhere. So in summary, primary sources are original, first-hand accounts or evidence from the time period being studied, while secondary sources are interpretations or analysis of primary sources created by individuals who were not directly involved. Primary sources provide direct insights and raw data, while secondary sources offer analysis, context, and interpretations of primary sources. So both types of sources are valuable in research and academic discussions, but they serve different purposes and provide different different levels of analysis so i guess that would be all for our discussion for today and i hope that you have gained something from it thank you and have a nice day everyone bye bye